Hi, everybody. This is Peter Schiff. It is Friday, October 10th, 2014. The big news this week, other than the big drop in global stock markets, was the release of the Federal Open Market Committee. That's FOMC's minutes. The minutes of their most recent meeting came out at 2 o'clock on Wednesday. And the markets were very surprised to learn that uh, Fed officials are concerned about the U.S. economy, far more concerned than they believed based on Janet Yellen's most recent press conference that followed the release of the Fed's official statement. Now, remember, I talked about how dovish the actual statement was, but there were some people who somehow interpreted Janet Yellen's performance during that press conference as being hawkish. And there was nothing really hawkish about it, but somehow the market spun it that way. Well, I think they got a big dose of reality, although not even reality yet, but they were maybe pointed in that direction when they were able to see the minutes, read the minutes from the actual meeting to see how concerned Fed officials are. And in fact, I think they're a lot more concerned about the economy than they let on in those minutes. But what did they discuss? What is worrying Janet Yellen and her crew at the Fed. Well, they're worried about the slowdowns in Europe and Japan. You know, Japan, by the way, is now back in a triple dip recession, right? So much for Abenomics working. Of course, they still haven't figured it out yet. In fact, the, ja the, the Europeans are so excited about Abenomics, uh, they want to do it in Europe, uh, even though it hasn't worked in Japan. Now, maybe they think it's worked in the United States, I got news for the Europeans. It hasn't worked here yet either. And that's something that people are going to be painfully aware of very soon. But the Fed is worried about the economic slowdown in Europe. And in fact, the news coming out of Europe has been worse since the Fed met. So if they were concerned the last time they met, they're probably even more concerned now. Another thing that is worrying the Fed is that the weak dollar, or no, the strong dollar, excuse me, the strong dollar is going to reduce inflation in the United States. Now, why that would be a concern, you know, should boggle your mind uh, because that should be a blessing. But the Federal Reserve doesn't look at it that way. They're claiming that they want higher inflation and this is going to work against that, that ends. It's going to counter, counter, counteract what they're trying to do, right? They're worried that a strong dollar is going to mean commodity prices will go down and Commodity prices have gone down. Take a look at the price of crude oil has fallen sharply as a result of the weak dollar. Americans will benefit from that because it's going to cost less to fill up your car with gasoline. But this is worrying the Federal Reserve. They're afraid that if consumers spend less on gasoline or other products, that somehow that is going to undermine the economy and undermine uh, employment. So the Fed is saying that weakness overseas and Downward pressure on domestic inflation that results from the strong dollar. And of course, the only reason the dollar is strong is because people think the Fed is going to hike rates, which they're not going to do, but they believe it. But now the Fed is saying because the dollar is stronger, we may not hike rates as soon as everybody thinks. But of course, it's the rate hikes that is creating all the dollar buying. But they still haven't taken the rate hikes off the table. What they really did in the minutes was tell people that we're still going to raise rates, but maybe later than you think. Even though nobody really has a date, they have a considerable period. But the Fed is trying to, try, is trying to figure out how to get out from under that language because they don't want the considerable period to imply a time constraint. What they really want to depend on is the data. And from my perspective, it doesn't matter what the data is. It's never going to signal a rate hike. Because here is the problem. Everybody who is betting on a Fed rate hike, the only reason they think the Fed can raise rates is because they think the Fed's monetary policy worked. They think QE was very successful. That, maybe that's why the Europeans want to emulate it. right? They think that our QE worked because we did it and because we had interest rates at zero for so long, we are now reaping the rewards that we've got a vibrant, growing economy, and that now the economy is so strong, the Fed no, no longer needs to support it with 0% interest rates and QE. 
That is completely wrong. We don't have a strong economy. We have a bubble. We have an economy that is more dependent than ever on 0% interest rates and quantitative easing. It is impossible to remove those supports. You cannot stop blowing air in a bubble and expect the bubble to continue to expand. It is going to deflate. The policy hasn't worked. It's failed. And because it's failed, they can't discontinue it. In fact, all of the problems that quantitative easing was supposed to solve have gotten worse because quantitative easing prevented the market from solving these problems because a market cure would involve some short-term pain. But the difference is a market cure would work. The Fed's cure doesn't. It just numbs you to the pain while the disease gets worse. And in fact, the U.S. economy is not in better shape than it was when the Fed began a quantitative easing. It's in much worse shape which is why it can't stop, because we're more addicted than ever. When the Fed you know, ended the first QE, they had to do QE2. Why? Because we were dependent on QE1. When they ended QE2, they had to do QE3, an operation twist. Why? Because we were more dependent on it. They couldn't take it away. Well, we're even more dependent now. So QE3 guarantees QE4. QE4 guarantees QE5. The only thing that stops the QE is the realization that it's never going to end. See, the only reason that the U.S. economy is still appears strong or that people are confident enough to buy the dollar is because they believe that QE is temporary. They believe that 0% interest rates are temporary. They haven't figured out that they're permanent. They haven't figured out that once we go down this road, there is no turning back. You can't create a recovery based on quantitative easing and 0% interest rates and expect the recovery to continue once you take away the supports. When people figure that out, that's when uh, we have a collapse of the dollar. And that's what ultimately brings QE to an end in that we die of an overdose. And that's why I've been saying since the beginning, if you live by QE, you die by QE because you can't take it away and you can't continue it forever because you overdose on it. But the latter is where we are headed. And that is going to be the big game turner, right? When people figure this out. Now, meantime, right, I've always said the Federal Reserve is looking for an excuse not to raise rates, an excuse to ramp QE back up. And it appears that the excuse that they've got, it's not necessarily just weakness abroad, but that it's the strength of the dollar. It's inflation not being high enough. It's still below their 2% target. See, before they were saying, well, we need unemployment to get below 6.5%. And it's below. It's 5.9. I mean, forget about how we got there by people leaving the labor force and taking you know, low-paying part-time jobs. I mean, the labor force itself has collapsed, right? But we're below the Fed's benchmark, yet they're not hiking rates. They're still doing QE. The next thing is inflation. They're claiming we don't have enough inflation, and so therefore we need more quantitative easing. But when the Fed talks about this supposed threat that the strong dollar is going to bring down commodity prices and lower consumer prices, that's not really what the Fed is worried about. I mean, that's what they talk about, right? But come on, I mean, that's not really a threat. I mean, even people, most people will agree, I hear it all the time on television, that Falling oil prices are good for the consumer and good for the economy because if consumers spend less of their money on gasoline, they have more money available to spend on other things. Well, if it's true about gasoline, it's true about everything. As prices come down, you automatically have more money to spend on other things. That's progress. Falling prices used to be considered progress. It meant that you were richer. It meant that you could afford to buy more stuff. But now progress is increasing prices, and if prices are falling, that's some kind of an economic disaster. This is just a ruse. The fact that so many people believe it is really incredible, but what the Federal Reserve is really afraid of, but it can't admit it, is asset prices. That's what it doesn't want to come down. So when the Fed is talking about the effects on, on prices of a strong dollar, it's not really worried about consumer prices, even though that's what they say. They're worried about stock prices. They're worried about real estate prices. Those are the prices the Fed doesn't want to come down. And those are the prices that they want to levitate with quantitative easing. After all, 
That's what quantitative easing was all about. And the Fed said it. Ben Bernanke, when he launched these programs, he specifically said they were designed to lift asset prices. Why did Ben Bernanke want asset prices higher? Apart from bailing out insolvent banks, he wants to create a wealth effect. Even if it's phony wealth, the effect is real in that people spend money they think they have. People borrow more money because they have the collateral. And he was trying to build a recovery on the foundation of asset bubbles. Even though the reason we had a recession was because the prior asset bubbles burst. The Fed didn't learn from its mistakes. It just repeated them on a grander scale. And now that the Fed is trying to take away uh, the air, right, they, the bubbles are going to burst. The idea that you can have all this stimulus and take it away, you know, it, again, it's like a guy is a, is a heroin addict and, you know, he's been taking heroin for so long and he's as high as a kite. And then somehow you determine, hey, this guy is so high because he took all his heroin. He doesn't need the heroin anymore. He's on a permanent high. So he no longer needs any drugs. He can stop taking heroin and he's going to feel just as great as if he was still taking it. It doesn't work that way. You know, you stop taking it and, you know, you, you come down and you, you know, you cold turkey or however you get rid of it. You, you know, it's a terrible collapse and, you know, you're having convulsions. Uh, it isn't easy to kick a drug habit. And it isn't going to be easy to kick the QE 0% interest rate habit, right? The economy is going to go through economic convulsions. And of course, the Fed doesn't want that. Next year, it's an election year, right? There's, there's no way uh, that they're going to allow, or not you know, next year, there's an election coming up. Uh, what am I talking about? Next is coming up in November. But by, by next year, they're going to be, you know, already, you know, working on uh, uh, the 2016 uh, presidential primaries, but they need to be doing something, right? They, they're not gonna, they're not gonna let this whole thing unravel. So there's gonna be more QE coming. In fact, I think the next round of QE, it's not gonna be just a repeat of what the Fed did last time. I think there's gonna be a a political push to let Main Street in on the action, because be when the Fed launches another round of QE, there are a lot of people who correctly understand that this benefits a small sliver of the U.S. population, those who have the assets, not the people who are working for these diminished paychecks and who have to pay higher prices, right, for their consumer goods. So I think the next round of QE could also be accompanied by a real old-fashioned pump priming stimulus program from the U.S. government, whether it's going to be stimulus checks like we got under Bush, only bigger, or some type of tax cuts or payroll tax holiday, but they're going to try to put money directly in the hands, right, of the average American so we can go out and spend it. And none of that's going to revive the economy, but it's going to reverse this upward trend in the dollar, and it's going to increase the pain uh, that average Americans experience when they have to buy uh, the, 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 the products that are necessary uh, for life. But the Fed, you know, again, doesn't care about this. So this was, this minutes, right? A light bulb maybe went off in somebody's head. This is the beginning, right, of, of, of Janet Yellen coming clean or crying uncle, right? They haven't admitted yet that they can't raise rates at all, but this is the first indication that they realize that they can't. Now it's a question of timing. As we get more weak economic data, which I'm sure is going to be forthcoming, right, the Fed now, I believe, is going to start to backpedal. And maybe one of the things they'll do is instead of that last taper, which they are still planning, right? They're still doing QE. And in the next meeting, they're supposed to take over. Maybe they're going to add some back. Maybe they're going to say, you know what? We've been tapering off. Now we've got to build it back up again. That might be the first salvo in that direction of a whole new uh, QE program. Although officially, maybe they don't have to launch QE4. They just reverse all the taper and QE3 is back on. And it's just QE infinity, which is where we are. But look, there's a lot going on. A lot happened this week in the markets. Uh, I'm going to talk about all that stuff in my uh, podcast. So make sure and tune in. If you haven't been watching or listening to the podcast, make sure and do that. We're doing them once a week. You can listen to them on this YouTube channel. You can download them at iTunes. You can also go to shiftradio.com and download them there because I got a lot more to say about what happened this week than what I'm recording today in the video blog. So that's it for now, and I'll be back again next week.